the Order, and the Boy Scouts of America. Life Advisor Emeritus, Mr. Robert O'Connor. First, I'd ask that you all rise for the presentation of the colors. Palazzini to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Scout salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Hunter. Charlie Guard dismissed. Thank you, everyone. I would ask that you please remain standing. I'd like to introduce Leia, Mr. LeCroc's great granddaughter, to sing our national anthem. <laughs> oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what's so bright? Stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, <laughs> and the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof. I'd now like to call up Jamie Boylan to lead us in the order of the arrow obligation. I do hereby promise on my honor as a scout that I will always and faithfully observe and preserve the traditions of the order of the arrow. We want to name, we want to sing, but to have away. I will always regard the ties of brotherhood in the order of the arrow as lasting. We will seek to preserve a cheerful spirit, even in the midst of irksome tasks and weighty responsibilities, and will endeavor, so far as in my power lies, to be unselfish in service and devotion to the welfare of others. You may be seated. We're all very excited to be here today to celebrate the creation of this pavilion, a project that took over a year of planning and brought together Tope Lodge, Camp Cashelot Alumni Association, and private companies to accomplish this fantastic feat. The project started just over a year ago when the Lodge Executive Committee, working with our Lodge Advisor, Mr. Paulson, among other dedicated advisors, put forth a plan to, for submission to the National Order of the Arrow Committee to be considered for a Lodge Service Grant. At the national planning meeting, we were awarded over $1,000 for a service grant for an extension to this pavilion. However, we were still a long way from breaking ground, gathering resources, or formalizing a final plan for this project. 
To raise the necessary funding for the project, the Lars partnered with the Camp Cashelot Alumni Association, and together we were able to contribute over $8,000. In addition, the Lodge reached out to private donors, and this outreach allowed us to fund the project, totaling over $11,000. It was at this time that Mr. Adrian McCure drew up the plans so that we could acquire the necessary building permits. We broke ground in early summer when Mr. Terry Edwards of T.L. Edwards generously donated and poured the pad that started the foundation of our project. Once the pad had been poured, our work crews got together with the help from Mr. G. Jim Tassino and his company, GBI Avis Inc., and members of Tall Bay 102. All of these efforts combined to create this beautiful new addition you see before us. In total, over 7,000 hours of cheerful service made today possible. Tall Bay Lodge would like to thank the Cash Law Alumni Association for their financial support and in helping the project to a successful completion. At this time, we'd like to call up several individuals without whose work this project could not have been completed. When your name is called, would you please join me up front? Mr. Fred Barrievos. Mr. Vic Silvia. Mr. David Gull. Ranger Carey. Mr. Stephen Spray. Mr. Bill Begin. Mr. Bill Belmore. Mr. Kevin Thompson. Mr. David Paulson. Mr. Jim Tassino, GBI Avis, Mr. Terry Edwards, and Mr. Adrian McKeon. <laughs> On behalf of the Lodge Executive Committee, I'd like to extend our gratitude for all of your hard work and to every individual that made this magnificent <laughs> pavilion a reality. We're gathered here today to dedicate this building to an individual who has served this camp, our order, and the council for many years, Lodge Advisor Emeritus, Mr. Robert LeCompte. Mr. LeCompte has been a faithful scouter and friend to us all. As a result, he has a storied career with Boy Scouts and making a difference in people's lives. I'd like to take a minute to highlight a few of Mr. LeCompte's accomplishments. <coughs> Life Scout, Troop 77 Swansea, Nokachoke Camper, Charter member of Nogachoke Lodge in 1938. Assistant Scoutmaster of Troop 16 Swansea. Scoutmaster of Troop 16 Swansea. 1964 National Jamboree Staff. 1967 World Jamboree Staff. 1971 World Jamboree Scoutmaster. Associate Lodge Advisor of Nogachoke Lodge from 1963 to 1972. Lodge Advisor of Nemat Lodge from 1972 to 1988 named Lodge Advisor Emeritus, Catholic Committee of Scouting, Wood Badge Trained, Vigil Honor, Founders Award, Distinct District Merit of Award, Silver Beaver, Bronze Pelican, St. George's Medal, Scouter's Key, <coughs> Commissioner's Key, Council Camping Committee, District Commissioner, attended countless conclaves from the 1960s to the 1980s, attended multiple National Order of the Arrow conferences, James E. West Award recipient, and most recently, the Order of the Arrow Centurion Award. We are excited to have five scouters with us today whose lives are greatly influenced by Mr. LeCompte that would like to share some brief words about him. First, from the Cachalot Alumni Association, we have the 1986 to 1988 NEMAT Lodge Chief, Dennis Wilkinson. Thank you, Mayor. So, I was trying to remember when I first met Mr. LeCompte. I think the answer is probably that I would have met him either at a at St. Vincent de Paul camp in Westport at a Catholic scout retreat sometime in the early 1980s, or more likely that I probably would have first run into him when I was checking in for my own ordeal weekend in 1983. But the first time I got to see him in his role as Lodge Lay Advisor would have been about a year after, 
when I was a freshly minted Brotherhood member of the Order of the Arrow, and I had been talked into taking the role of communications chairman for Nemat Lodge. I couldn't have told you what a Lodge lay advisor was then, what one did, but I knew that Mr. LeCompte was the guy who had the clip art I needed so I could get the totem pole out. <laughs> so I went to him, got the masthead, all was good. Over the course of the next few years, I got to see Mr. LeCompte in action at all of our executive committee meetings. Now, we used to meet in the old scout office over on Grove Street in New Bedford. We'd get together in the conference room, advisors and youth alike, talk about the agenda, go through everything that was on the docket for the meeting, get everybody's opinions, and then Mr. LeCompte would corral up all of the adults and bring them into the kitchen so that the, adult, so that the youth could make the decisions in the program. Sometimes he wasn't so successful at corralling Marcel Udon, who would sneak back into the room and raise trouble, but that was more Marcel than Bob. Uh, in 1986, I was elected Lodge Chief. And I'm pretty sure that Mr. LeCompte was the first adult to congratulate me. He might have been distracting me because that was when the outgoing executive board grabbed me for the ceremonial toss in Class A in the Five Mile Pond that came with being elected in those days. <laughs> As my lay advisor, Mr. LeCompte was invaluable to me getting my job done. Um, he was always there to answer questions, obviously. Um, he was always there to help out with things like the administrative and financial side of things at our large lodge events. But more, more to the point, he always had good advice about how to run the lodge and how to run our events, thanks to years of long experience as an arrowman, a scouter, and a businessman. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with the running of, a, of an Order of the Arrow Lodge, for a lot of youth, it's their first opportunity to run an operation as large as a lodge, something bigger than a patrol or a troop, and to run events of the size of the events that a lodge puts on. You can see just how many people are here today. And Bob had been there, done that, and probably made the silk screen for the t-shirt. <laughs> so I happened to run for a second term as chief in 87. And the 87-88 term was, was momentous because, among other things, Mr. LeCompte had decided that that was going to be his last term as Lodge Lay Advisor. Um, Daryl Sylvia came on board as the Associate Lay Advisor to kind of learn the ropes a little bit before he had to try and fill Bob's shoes the following year. And it was also coincident with the, 40, uh, the 50th anniversary of the founding of Nokachoke Lodge, which was the older of the two lodges that merged to form NEMAT and which gave NEMAT its number, 124 in the early 70s. Uh, that's when I discovered that Mr. LeCompte was actually a founding member of Nokachoke Lodge. In short, he had been in the Order of the Arrow in southeastern Massachusetts for as long as there was an Order of the Arrow in southeastern Massachusetts. And when it came time for us to put together the Lodge's 50th anniversary celebration that spring, all of his memories, his recollections, his personal stories, his contacts with people, especially on the Nokachoke side who hadn't been around in a while, and that room full of memorabilia and documents and records and yeah, silk screens in the room of your house over there by the river in Somerset, all of that was completely invaluable for us to put together that program that weekend. And that weekend wouldn't have been nearly as successful if not for his involvement. And I know that just a few years ago, when John Widmark and others were documenting the history of all of the lodges that merged to form Abnaki and now Tulpe, uh, that all of that information was once again just as valuable in putting those documents together. Uh, so if you had told 18-year-old me at that 50th anniversary weekend that I would be out here at camp today, again, with Mr. LeCompte, celebrating his contributions and his achievements over the years, on the eve of the 80th anniversary of Nokachoke Lodge, I probably would have told you you were nuts. But here we are. And I, I really can't tell you how thankful I am to be here and to be able to tell you again face to face, thank you for everything you did for me and for everything you did for all the chiefs that came before me so that we had an order of the arrow to work with in southeastern Massachusetts. So like I said, next year's 80. I really hope to see you out here celebrating. Thank you. Then I'd next like to welcome all the Lodge Advisor, David Paulson, with us to share some words from, from Jack Ludwig and Leonard Fridge. Yay! So, I'm here. 
So this first note is from uh, Jack Legwidge. To recognize Bob LeCompte with his honor is truly fitting and timely. I first met Bob in 1967 when he joined the BSA as a district executive in the then Massasoit Council in Harvard, Massachusetts. His interaction with Bob was both professional and personal. He was a mentor. He also he had no prior experience becoming a professional in scouting and looked to you as his um, true mentor and guide for this process. He was, in his words, Bob was always someone I could turn to when the going got tough. He was a true scouter who practiced scout oath and law every single day of his life. He was also instrumental in making his experience in scouting worthwhile. And today he's still involved with, with this council. He runs the Moby Dick Golf Classic. And so he's still involved today. That's because of you. And finally, he will always be grateful for the guidance and friendship you've provided to him. So that's from Jack. And uh, he's very appreciative. He was really sad that he couldn't be here today. Um, the next one is from Len Freeman, who was the 1969 Nokachoke Lodge Chief. Um, he emailed me just recently, and he said, Bob, you're a great example of what it is to be a leader and a teacher. You inspired many of those who ultimately became successful in both their professional and personal lives, including scouting. You were always there to guide the leaders in the OA and offered much, offered much when asked, but you let us make the decisions and enjoyed watching us grow into mature adults. And as a lodge advisor, that's something that I try to live up to. As a, as a owe you a debt of gratitude, he wishes you congratulations to the Silver Fox for this long overdue recognition for the countless hours of effort. So, thank you, Len Freeman. Thank you, David. Finally, Elliot Gulp would like to share some words from Mr. Jonathan Woodmark, Scout Executive of the Cape Fear Council and former Abnaki Lodge Staff Advisor. Elliot? So, so before I, be, I read Jonathan's words, uh, I just want to say, so my first time actually meeting Mr. LeCompte was with Jonathan. Uh, now Jonathan was the, is now the Scout Executive of the Cape Fear Council, which is down in North Carolina. Uh, the Wilmington area, uh, but he was a longtime staff advisor uh, with uh, Abnaki Lodge, the predecessor lodge to Tulpe. And uh, when he became staff advisor, one of his tasks was to kind of collect and find out all of the history of the former lodges that make uh, Tulpe Lodge 102 what it is today. And uh, one of his first stops when he was searching for everything was to go to Mr. LeCompte's house. Uh, and I was fortunate enough to, to uh, when I first met Mr. LeCompte, he invited us up into uh, his scouting room in his house. and. He pulled out all of his patches, the photos that he had, um, and a lot of that was, is, it's amazing that he has all of this history as a charter member of the Lodge because all of it is really instrumental um, in what our Lodge is today. Um, so there's a lot of great history. I really appreciate you sharing it with us. And, and Jonathan has actually worked on a book um, about the Lodge that he'll be sharing with us when their, their 80th anniversary happens next year. So, um, so thank you for helping us with all of that. But, with this, um, I will read Jonathan's note, and he again sends his regrets and wishes he couldn't be here. So he writes, the first thing I think of when I think of Bob LeCompte is his laugh. He has the most uniquely marvelous laugh I have ever encountered. It's high-pitched and rumbles forth from the very core of his soul, emanating a good nature with a tinge of mischievous glee that is not only infectious, infectious but truly heartwarming. There are men in their 70s, right down to teenage boys, that display... Um, teenage boys that to this day would recognize that laugh anywhere. I consider myself truly blessed to be among them. I first met Bob around 2008. I was working on documenting the history of the Order of the Arrow and the Council, and Jerry Goulet and Rick Pierce said I needed to meet Bob LeCompte. I called him up and he invited me to his home to chat. I think I drove by his driveway four times before I actually found it though. He was sitting on his front porch waiting for me. He was sunbathing, his dog was sitting on his lap, and he had his U.S. Coast Guard combat veteran hat on, placed squarely atop his head. He invited me to pull up a chair, and he came out, uh, and, and came out my notebook and pen. I was prepared with a series of questions, but was completely unprepared for the depths of responses. These were not short answers to the, qu the questions I, I had written down, and I quickly began to realize that this guy didn't just have the answers to my questions, he had lived them. He has been a scoutmaster, 
He's led a troop to the World Jamboree in Japan, encamped in the shadow of Mount Fuji. He has spent decades mentoring men in the Order of the Arrow, and has spent more nights than there are stars in the sky watching over his boys around the campfire. Bob has received nearly every award scouting has to bestow. He has lived in the same town his whole life and watched his council names change three times and his OA lodge change four times. Bob has given so very much of himself to many generations that there is little we can do to truly express the heartfelt gratitude. There are no more awards and frankly there isn't enough room left on his uniform for another patch. It seems to me that the miracle is that uh, that is Bob LeCompte is not much about what he achieved, but about what he contributed. I suspect all of those here, many of you who have known him for far longer than me, would agree that Bob's gift to us all was his time. He had a large family of his own, a business to run, and yet he always found the time, no matter what there was. That is the true permanence of Bob LeCompte's legacy. The time he gave and the time he spent with each of us will live on forever, as an example and an inspiration. And again, that's from Jonathan Widmark, Scout Executive of the Cape Fear Council. Thank you, Elliot. It is now my honor and privilege to welcome the Wallamanampog Indian Council to perform a dedication song for Mr. Lacombe and the Order of the Arrow Pavilion. Thank you very much. 
I'd now like to ask Mr. Lecoq to join us along with our Lodge Advisor, Mr. Paulson, and Dennis Wilkinson of the Cashawat Alumni Association as we officially dedicate the pavilion. We now officially dedicate this building, the Order of the Arrow Pavilion, in honor of Lodge Advisor Emeritus, Robert W. Lecomte. Thank you all for joining us today as we dedicated this great new addition to Camp Cachalot and honor the service of Mr. Lacombe. Immediately following the close of this dedication will be a reception and lunch sponsored by the Talbot Lodge. I encourage all of you to visit with Bob, the Alumni Association, and the Lodge at their tables. Have a great afternoon.